contact! How deep can you plunge into the darkness? Through the dark veil of space time. I wish we could have joined you sooner. This is your killer! Time is short. There is much to be done. The wait ends now. All right, welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Warp Chatter Podcast, the podcast dedicated to talking about Horus Heresy Legion's digital card game, Horus Heresy Lore, Warhammer 40,000, everything that that encompasses. I am your host, Scufty, and this is a podcast by players for players. To that end, we've got a couple of players joining us uh, who are on Discord, but I actually, I think you guys are both on the reddit as well so we've got double redditors again we're going double red here oh god <laughs> yeah it's dangerous when you go double red you don't need too much and that's that's no good but uh yeah so <laughs> join us today we have call of cthulhu uh hi i'm call of cthulhu just call me alex okay probably easiest we'll, 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 um it's one syllable or two syllables versus four so exactly or <laughs> call but i feel like calling me call is would get a bit confusing. Okay. Um, I got into our Cersei Legions maybe well, about a wee, a year ago, actually. Uh, I was working a really dead-end job at a, as a grocery store clerk, um, and I was trying to find stuff I could play on my phone that I could like sneak in while uh, I wasn't busy. And I've always been into 40K. I haven't really... When I was younger, my uncles introduced me into fantasy, um, and since then, me and my brothers have all played uh, Warhammer both 40k and fantasy, although I pref prefer fantasy because I actually have models for it. Uh, but I've been playing the game for about a year. Uh, favorite factions, probably Orphans of War. I like copying cards. I don't know. Anything else? Uh, what, 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 when did you, what's, what's uh, expansion was, was playing when you got started? Like, where did you step in at? I'm not sure, actually. I think, I think the newest card was uh, maybe Galaxy and Flames. I'm not sure. No. I think Galaxy and Flames came a little bit after I started playing. Yeah, that came out this the January, missions. so if, if it was last year, probably, then that would put you with... Uh, with yeah, like, tip. maybe February. I, I I know I started around the same time as that began. Okay, okay, well, then that's, yeah, that's right around the time for the kickoff, so very good. Yeah. All right. Well, and then also join us is uh, It's John. Is that just, should I just say uh, It's John, or say it slow, say it fast? Hey everyone, you can just call me John. Oh, okay. All right. So we've got John yeah, and John's Alex fine. from from the Reddit. Oh god. The the only Johns <laughs> and Alexes in in Reddit whatsoever. There's no others. Absolutely. <laughs> well, tell us about yourself. Um uh my name's John. I'm actually a uh full-time Hearthstone Twitch streamer. Um I have streamed some Horus Heresy Legions in the past, mostly event runs because I like the arena format of Hearthstone. Um I started playing Horus Heresy Legions right when the Custodes expansion came out. I forget the name of the expansion. Prospero. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right when Prospero burned is when I started playing. Mm -hmm. And I love the Custodes. Um, I've moved away from them as like playing more and more event runs. I've gotten to touch more and more factions. And right now I play a lot of Night Lords and Imperial Fists mostly. Okay. Well, that's, and, a, good, um, that's a good mix. Yeah. I mean, between two, you got Sevatar and you got Sigismund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mostly play combo Diaz, but yeah, oh, <laughs> I, okay. I do like Sigismund. <laughs> That's the one warlord of the Imperial Fist that I haven't got a, more than 100 games with yet. Like, I it's, just, uh, I can't. He, I, I like him. I know, I know why he plays. I know how to play him. I just don't want to do the turrets. <laughs> right, yeah, it's totally autopilot. It's, <laughs> it's, and That's then all. of course, um, I play Sergeant Cork also for fun. Excellent. That's always a fun warlord. Especially now with the uh, the the mission, I I don't have this any of the neutral missions, but Solar Exilla mission, Chaos Cultist mission, I think you could both make work with Cork. Yeah, I actually main Solar with him, so I'm really excited to give that a shot. Thanks. <laughs> well, we're gonna we have be... th oh, go ahead. four missions in one deck. Sorry, that was <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Neutral's crazy like that, right? Yeah. Well, you, if you want, you could take the Dark Angels. And then they got their forbidden secret mission, and then they've also got the dark angel mission. You can go five. Oh yeah, you can go five. Oh my god, have more missions than you can have in your in your opening hand. Like, <laughs> see what happens. Like, do you yeah, get do that? Play play two missions first turn. Uh, next turn to play your other mission. 
the rest Damn, of emotes at your opponent. Yeah, rest of yeah. the game, just top deck. Like, what are you going to get? Yep. Emotes and top decks. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about building a collection today. That's that's the main topic of discussion, so it's kind of good uh, to listen to where you guys both came into the game, which is different points. So, I mean, I've been playing yeah. since beta, so my experience is completely different. You've been playing, uh, John, since Prospero, so you are kind of like right at that peak time, and there's a lot of expansions after the fact. And then, Alex, you stepped in here just recently, so there is a lot yeah. to catch up with. There. I mean, the game has... What do we got here now? Ten expansions? Hang on, let me let me get in there and count. It's a it's a lot more. I mean, it's a lot. And and I believe, and granted, we just we're still in an expansion currently, right? Like we we've got some fifth worlders that are probably going to be dropping over the next couple of events. Yeah. And then if timing goes right, I would imagine, and we may find out more about this maybe if we keep our fingers crossed next week when we talk to the community manager in the Q and A. But uh, I imagine sometime in November, December, we're probably going to get another expansion. That's just typical expansion timing. So yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. Keeping up the schedule. That's right. Yeah, you gotta keep it routine. You gotta keep it regular so that uh, people don't get bored and leave or tired. And be like, well, there's nothing new going yeah. on. Especially if an expansion is like a total whiff. You got to get a new one out so people yeah. aren't just totally turned off. How do you, yep. how do you guys feel about the Titan Death expansion? <laughs> um, uh, it's a loaded I question. Don't like, uh, I don't. Sorry, sorry you ahead. can go first. Uh, I don't know. I was, I was speaking as I guess the um, noob of the of the group. I don't know. I haven't. I've no. I know people aren't huge fans of the Titans. I haven't seen too many of them, but the games that I have played against them, it's just taken a long time, and I haven't had issues with like getting stomped or anything. But yeah. the games take a lot longer mm -hmm. is something I've definitely noticed. And that's something that as a as a control player at heart, I, I kind of enjoy. I, I only play against Titans, though. But at the same time, it well, it hurts a lot more if you lose. Because it feels like all that time is wasted. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're, yeah. it's a fast game and you lose, it's like, oh, you can just hop into another one. Yeah, that's true. When especially, like, I mean, when you're playing, when you're, when you're the run running the control, you set the pace. And that that that's the payoff like it and you can know at a certain point like okay I've, I've lost control basically the pace is out of my hands now i'm just kind of rolling to see if i can finish it <laughs> but when you're playing against a control and you, it's it's an uphill battle and you spend 15 17 some of these games have gone as long as 28 plus minutes uh oh. and lose i mean granted i think the time scaling has dip down a little bit thanks to a couple balance patches but for the most part that, yeah that's a lot of time for a mobile like one game in the mobile yeah I, I feel like for a lot of decks it becomes a very mr me seeks moments where it's like why am i still alive like why how am i still in this <laughs> yes. game you know how is this um, still I, going and then you, and you yeah. check the cards in your deck too, you're like there's still like 10 more cards in my deck we haven't even gone yeah. that far it's just taking forever um, the, the Titan Death expansion is such a mixed bag because, like, for experienced players, the kind of auxiliary cards that aren't Titan-related are very nice and very spicy and very flavorful and definitely mix up the meta. But for new players, you don't have to collect a whole lot of Titan cards to have a functional deck. And, and like, with that said, that does kind of bite the more experienced players because, like you said... Um, Alex, uh, it's right, yeah. it, it's just terrible for, like, a 30-minute game. It's a time sink, right? But to each their own, like, I, people, the Titans are definitely a turnoff. I don't think it's, like, the end of the world or anything, but it's definitely, yeah, like you said, a mixed bag's the best way to describe it. Yeah, I, yeah. and I, I think part of that, too, like like you said, like, there are the, the, the third and fourth wave, the new cards for the older factions as well as the new neutrals have got some yeah. great tools for people to want to play this expansion. But if you're a newer player... This then those cards will do nothing for you without the base set of those factions, and then you're really just getting Titan cards to look at. And looking yeah, at the yeah. list, I mean, we've got yeah, we've got a total of ten expansions so far in the game. And I mean, honestly, I know Titan Death is probably the it's if I, if it, if it is not the least well received facts uh, expansion, then it is certainly in the top two, and that's a tough contender because Prospero and <laughs> um, Caliban were were uh, really 
Like, a lot of people swore they were leaving the game and or did leave the game, and we just never heard from them again, thanks to the introduction of Psyker Energy in the Thousand yeah. Suns and the Knights in, in the Defenders of Caliban expansion. So the Titans don't have a second energy source, but they do have the Titan weapons and the bodies, and and it's a different kind of power scaling, and it is not, uh, it's not for everybody. Yeah, um, the multiple hit point pools definitely threaten less experienced players. Um, yeah. They don't know what to do. Like, uh, an abundance of options is just as crippling as having no options a mm -hmm. lot of times in a card game like this. And, you know, when you're facing down <laughs> three to four auxiliary hit point pools, you kind of lose focus sometimes. Especially because there's, like, which one do you stop? Which of these weapons is the most threatening? If you're newer, you're not going to be able to make the most informed decision on which one is the most important if it's uh, one of the... I can't forget the keyword meltdown. The yeah, shutdown. Yeah, shutdown. Yeah, shut down. Shut down. And it's actually funny you bring up the Prospero expansion because that's, you know, like was mentioned earlier, that's when I first started playing. And um, I actually built a Thousand Suns deck very, very early into my collection. That had a very weak deck, and it was like a contender all the way almost to like <laughs> yeah. 2,000 trophies just because it was so out of pocket sometimes. Yep. Yeah, the, the fact that their second resource pool, and they, and they had a lot of different... I want to say like three or four out the gate because the the psycho energy and the troops they weren't in line. I think where they're at currently now is a great spot, but yeah. it was like ridiculous. Like psychic lash, psychic energy. You had Telos changers that worked with it. You had uh, troops that like it was so much, and it was like all you had to do was uh, get to you know not even six or seven energy psychic yeah. energy. You could be up by like forty eight and then just generate a psychic lash and just wipe the board. And they scaled that back down, but the damage is done. And, you know, <laughs> at that point. So I think they learned a little bit of a lesson. I think Knight's households were tamer with how they worked with Plasma and how yeah. you had to be, you know, like, it, you just have one unit that's going to use it. You've got to use it carefully. But because the Knight households have got a lot of card draw that they had in there, there was several ways to reduce your Plasma or gain Plasma in a clutch. And they still have those. It didn't feel as, as bad, but it felt like you're still managing it's very well deck construction. And the Titans, like you said, I mean, if you've got the Titan and uh, one or two weapon options, and then you throw in a couple of troops, you can do really well with just either burn tactics or, or uh, support troops or just neutrals in there if you want to run that way too. I think you get better the more stuff you kind of refine your deck with, but that doesn't mean that somebody who, riding it at, uh, Prospero or Kalf is not going to have success with the Titan. Yeah, yeah, it's so easy to build around that large tent pole because you need so few cards to get going. Mm -hmm. Well, also coming from a different, slightly different direction on the Psyker cards and the weapons. Um, as I mentioned, I play mostly Orphans of War and specifically Narek Kirin, mm -hmm. uh, who co and I copy cards from people's decks, and so uh -oh. every time it, I face, <laughs> yeah, every time I face right. Thousand Suns or Night Houses, it just a worse matchup for me just because inst I get that. Yeah. I think it's zero cost that just draw a card. And so it kind of ruins both the, my enjoyment of copying people's cards and killing them with them. But it also makes it so that the fun, special thing about my warlord is no longer interesting. It just becomes two hundred half the time becomes two energy draw card. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes a very non game at that point. Upsettingly. Yep. Yeah, you're, you're hoping, if anything, you're like, okay, knights, there's like four troops that you could benefit from. All their tactics aren't probably going <laughs> to do you much. Like, what good are you going to do with plasma? And exactly. then with titans, you're like, hey, maybe you'll get a titan troop or something. That could be good. But if not, if you're getting, like, load of siege weapon, you're like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Adamantium weaponry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, obviously, the psychers, that's a whole different, like, I mean, every one of those is just going to be a draw card until you get a copy, like, City of Tisca. And then generate your own psychic energy. It can happen. Yeah, but yeah. those are the meme games. Um, yeah, those are the uh, exceptions, not the rules. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah. The, the uh, so I, I talking about Titan because I was kind of wanted to gauge your guys' opinion on it, but also as a point. Typically, 
I would say prior to Galaxy and Flames, and even honestly, Galaxy and Flames is not a bad example of this. I think Titan Death is kind of the first set where, you know, normally if someone's starting a game and they always say, hey, what what, what should I buy? What's expansion? Because all the expansions are faction specific. And typically, yeah. I would always recommend start with the newest expansion because number one, that's the most newest most uh, power scaled like you don't want to get something from like four expansions ago that really is not in a good spot because the meta has changed or adjusted typically yeah. the newest set has also got the new whatever mechanic or feature and or neutrals that support or uh, address those said features whether it's stealth ward precog duplicitous those tools don't come yeah. online in istvan 5 or extermination you know? <laughs> yeah so this is a this is one of the sets where that really isn't the case. Like if someone is a new player, we're starting right now, and they were to ask me like, "What set should I buy?" I would probably I don't know. Like I personally, I would either say Ispawn Three because you start out with Loken and Sons of Horus or Sons of Horus, uh, or what faction do you like, and then go from there. I don't know. What would yeah. what are your guys' thoughts? Well, I I remember so throughout uh, I struggled finding because people would always say, "Oh, just." pick the faction you like and stick with it, but I, I couldn't decide, and so I remember I went with, shoot, who did I play? I played um, the Dark Angels a decent bit, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I only had uh, the Rare Warlord Neil, I think, mm -hmm. and he just wasn't enjoyable, and so then I went, I played, um, I kept switching my focus because I couldn't decide which faction I liked, and I think that's a detriment because it left my collection very scattered in the beginning mm -hmm. and so it's it's rough sometimes to pick one and stick with it especially if you decide on one and it ends up not being your preferred play style mm -hmm. yeah that's that's definitely good good advice um you know conversely to like the buy the faction you like um i, I think horse heresy legions is really unique in that like all the factions despite being so similar have really really good class identity yeah. So um, it is kind of supportive of like the new individual to tell them to buy like the faction they like the most. But, you know, like you mentioned earlier, some of the factions are just completely out of touch. They're just too old. Like their utility cards are almost pathetic compared to new utility cards. So I, I would almost say, and I'm biased here again because of like my Hearthstone Arena background and playing Magic the Gathering. But I, I right. would say if you want to build a collection, um, play the event play the campaign, um, touch as many cards as possible without having to like commit resources to building your collection. Um, you get free packs from the campaign. You get to touch almost every good faction um, commander from that faction. And then doing the event, you know, a ticket is pretty easy. If you open daily packs and do daily quests, you get at least one ticket a day. And that gives you a potentially high level crate, valuable experience. And you, again, you get to touch a bunch of cards that you would otherwise never get to touch. Now, if you were forced into the corner of having to buy crates for a collection rather than having like the option of playing like maybe time constraints, I guess, um, I, I would definitely just lead into the new cards. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good. Yeah. That was a good uh, idea. I like that one. I think so. I, and and that's both of those are good points in terms of things to keep in mind, or I want to say strategies, but uh, they're just they're, they're they're methods in terms of how do you gain cards, right? Because you do gain, yeah. the, you get your daily packs, you do your daily challenge. Maybe you're doing the early achievements, or you're doing the neophyte challenges. Which, if you're starting out the new game, and somehow you're listening to this podcast, thank you for finding it really so quick. Um, mm -hmm. But if not, then spread this word. But I mean, like you know, get a neophyte, level twenty five, do those achievements, get crates that way. But at the end of the day event is the best way to not just get cards but like you said like to get experience with the cards because you're yeah. going to see a lot of like you're going to see at least four usually four factions maybe five six depending on reinforcements different cards you're going to see legendaries you know that you won't as a new player have access to and at least you can gauge like oh yeah i really wow doombringer that's a good card oh ambassador Mulligator, like that's a good card like it may be ages yeah. before you pick it up in the shop or it comes across you in a pack but you can recognize the value by having it played or playing it yourself mm -hmm. and i was gonna say and then you've got obviously the uh the end reward you know i mean if you if you go far and you get 12 wins you get your credit you get your crate back <gasps> then you also get uh you know some gold 
and some additional cards. And typically at the higher end, the, the 10 through 12 crate rewards you know higher epics, so you're more likely to even get new warlords, which then will allow you to step into new factions. Multiple epics, maybe even multiple legendaries if you're lucky. Yeah. 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 Especially if you're doing like a ten times crate run or ten ten ticket run, which is something we can talk about here in a little bit. Um <laughs> But I kind of wanted to circle back, though, to, to the crate buying, because I think that's important. Like, if, if you have, whether it's, it's time constraints or you've got gold and you're like, hey, what do I what am I buying into? I think a big thing, and I've, I see it with other players, too, and I try to, when I when I see it, like, don't do that. That's not a good method. Where they like, oh, I'm going to do a little pack from Misfon 3. I'll get a couple packs from Misfon 5. Okay. And you end up spending... Because of the, the the forgiveness counter, or the sympathy counter, however you want to call it when you get the guaranteed legendary at 30 tickets. If you haven't gotten yeah. a legendary by crate 30, you're going to get one, but only set specific. And you can be a player and you can spend like 80 crates across 10 expansions and not see a single legendary. Where if you just sunk all that into one expansion, you could get two legendaries, maybe even three at that point. So if, yeah. you, if you're going to buy crates... Pick an expansion and buy from that expansion until you get a legendary, and then make a decision if you want to keep buying from that or change change it up. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's a good advice. idea. You you don't want to hit a legendary in an uh, an expansion with a faction you literally just bought the first pack of. Yeah, uh, definitely buy thirty of one stack. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean by that? Is simply just for the protection. Because if you're grabbing like five Ishvan fives, and that's all you're grabbing from them, well, in 25 more cards, you're at least guaranteed a legendary. You may as well push for it because legendaries are impactful in majority of factions. Yeah, yeah, and um, there are there are some legendaries that can be, you know, a sad feeling legendary, but they are far and few between. And if you're playing, if if you're buying, let's say you're you're buying from Prosperity, you're like, hey, you know what? I've made a decision. I like Thousand Suns, or I like Custodians, or I like Space Wolves. I knew a book was going to be mentioned. There's two books. Yes. I don't know which. The legendary that you get is going to be from those. And I think there's only like two, I would say, in there that are kind of like meh. Three. Okay, three currently. And that's yeah, it. Like, you've got you've got the, the Annihilator. You've got the... Uh, but yeah, the, the Custodius Corpus Annihilator. And you've got Book of Magnus okay. is kind of meh. You know, but I mean... Yeah. As a new player, it might not be. You know, it might be a tool that you're like, hey, wow, cool, I've got it. But the pool of good legendaries is much bigger, and they're more likely to be for what you want. Versus like, ah, uh, you know, Isvan Three. God, there's so many greater demons that are crap. There's the Punisher. There's the yeah. Ten Ten Titan. Uh, there's several cards in the Death Guard card pool. Yeah, like oh. there's everything except for Armor of Mars in the World Eaters, and uh, even that isn't great. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna, if you're looking for like specific high cards from older factions, uh, I highly recommend using like the the daily quest targeting thing or like the daily challenge yes. targeting rewards. Yes, it's massively important. Yeah, I've got that set for me right now on on the uh, the Trader Titans because I'm still missing four cards. Now, granted, they're all legendary, but I have I've used this 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 uh this options since it became available to us to select the faction that you get your your challenge crate from yeah. and i have gotten one legendary from it in the two years that's been available to us so you can get legendaries you can get i've gotten many more epics i've gotten epics i've even gotten premiums it's possible yeah. you can get legendaries from free crates i mean that's that's possible too but like if you want that expansion or that that faction or even better what i recommend pick a neutral category and use that to mm -hmm. fill up your neutral pool because the neutrals man there's so much i want to talk about with 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 getting cards because the neutrals they're they're spread through all these the, all these expansions and all of them yeah i hate referring yep. somebody like hey get an asteroid sanctuary or asteroid belt or informant network or like these these key neutral cards and then i'm pointing them to an expansion that they don't really want the faction for i don't want to play right. you yep. know Alpha Legion and Iron Warriors and Night Lords, but that's the, yeah. that's the expansion that you're telling me that these neutrals are in. Okay, well then that's a good way to go about it. Just set it to Chaos or Mechanicum or Imperial Army, and every day you'll get some cards from that, and the neutral card pool is so vast and so huge it could take you a while to fill that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, you know, getting any new cards is a pretty feels-good man feeling, right? Like yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't want to see yeah. doubles right away early on where you're like, oh, gems oh. already? Or the worst is when you yeah. get a crate and like it's three copies of the same card. I'll, I like that feeling specifically. I just find it funny. But for me, the what hurts <laughs> is the, uh, the uh, whatever it's called, no duplicate protection on legendaries. Yes. Yeah. I got yeah. Bane of Blade or Bio Blade like three times oh. before any other legendary. It, it's no. funny you say that because um, in Hearthstone they actually introduced legendary protection on packs because there was a really popular YouTube video when like one of their big expansions came out and this guy opened 120 packs and he opened 13 of the same legendary. Oh wow! And, and like everyone flamed Blizzard. It was terrible and it was one of the worst legendaries in this set. So they almost were forced to introduce legendary protection. <laughs> I um, I will point out there is no protection. No. Evergild is no. a very nice company, though. And if you've sent them, if you, you don't really need to send them proof because they can check your account. But if you tell them, I've opened three in a row or four in a row and I've gotten the exact same one every time, they'll let you pick one. Oh, wow. They've done it before. Oh, yeah. That's, done it that's before. tremendous. That's huge. I'd be curious to see if they continue doing that or not. And I've had actually. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I have several, uh, several folks have asked to have the question asked on the QA next week about duplicate protection or you know and i think that's a valid question that's been raised before and they've said mm. eh you know like no no thanks but i mean there are those instances where and and i had uh with galaxy and flames i got the world eaters mission six times oh. and it's like <laughs> really like and, and that's and, and that's know. that's from buying crates that's not from like event runs or anything like that. that's just straight from buying crates it's like yeah that hurts and i didn't i didn't pm because i had you know gold spirits like yeah whatever like half of the time it was it was a joke it's like here we go here it is it's world leaders but it still is the feelings there the protection uh the 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 sympathy counter the 30 crate limit didn't used to be a hard guarantee it was just kind nope. of like a recommend like well you know somewhere between you know 20 <laughs> to 30 and when extermination came out there was a uh it wasn't just me that like multiple players had this like the very first like i want to say three or four hours of the expansion there was something off with the coding nobody got uh, legendaries i opened like 60 plus crates no legendary whatsoever Oof. and i had like eight copies of perturabo's wrath i still like cringe every time i open the perturabo's <laughs> wrath wow this is useless yeah so following that expansion they added that feature which was great but they had a lot of people uh email them like you know and then they had to you know basically give out legendaries of choice so i i think they'd like to avoid doing that and if they could find a way to code it where they can have some sort of sympathy per, or duplicate protection that would be fantastic or even if you get to that point like hey 30th crate uh it's a duplicate you know like we recognize instead of 1600 gems uh you know here's a choice of three or something like that i don't know i don't know how they would do it or maybe like a, a, a legendary token, and then you email Evergild, and then they take your token, and they give you something else. I don't know. But it wouldn't <laughs> uh, be yeah, a bad Mag idea. Uh, Magic actually has a, a token system like that, interestingly enough. So, you know, the, like, science, the science is there. Yeah, it's possible. I like the I like the concept of, like, every pack you open, when you get a legendary, it offers you three, Ooh, maybe nice. one from each um, faction. That would be bad. That's well, that your choice. Or when it, yeah, yeah, that would be and, bad. Like just the choice of three at, at your legendary, so you're more likely to get something that you need. Exactly. Yeah. I, there's, I think there's a lot of ways that they could go about improving it. Whether or not they, you know, take take up on that or listen to the uh, the voices remains to be seen. But what's important for folks to know is if that happens and you, you find yourself hidden the same one or and not like in a row, reach out to Evergild. It's possible. Just a lot yeah. of, if you have a problem, reach out to Evergill. Because even if you find a bug, they'll usually just pay you in gold for being the first one to report a new bug. Yeah, I had an issue in my... And actually, I remember this specifically because it was the game that I, I won in order to get to Terra. I, there was some issue where, um, you know, like the units are spaced, so you can have six troops on the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. For whatever reason, it same it theme like thought one of them was occupied and so oh, yeah. my troop limit was five for the entire game and so i oh. sent in a report about that and they gave me some gems so that's very nice yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's so that, that is something that you can do for yeah 
There you go, people. First hand evidence. That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, I remember when challenge crates first came out, you could, half the players couldn't open them. Yes. <laughs> I got I got just a um I think it was two hundred yeah, it was two hundred gold for it. So, you know, Oof. every gold will give people stuff. Any I mean, if you come across a bug, that's one way to report it. Obviously if you're a newer player, you might not know that it's a new bug, but uh give it a whirl, give it a shot. The support button, you hit that little that little uh, gears icon, and then right there in support, and then it takes you to the PM, and you send them a message. The worst that could happen is they say, we are aware of the issue, and we've taken care of it. You know, like, that's, Ooh, that's the worst that could happen. I, I have a story <laughs> that annoys me, though, for the folks at home. So I was bug testing with a Hungarian man named Dolz. We, uh, my listeners may know him. He's been on before, and we like to make fun of him at times because he's a friend of mine. <laughs> um I've reported a bug we found, and they told us that they were already aware, so I didn't get anything. And then he reported the bug ten minutes later, and they hit him with, uh, this is the first time we're hearing about this, here's a hundred gold. <laughs> and I was, I was amazed. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome, that's the right word for that's that. That's the right word for that. <laughs> that's the like, favorites. Yes. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, that yeah, sounds he's, like he's awesome. that's that's right, you know. Hey, they, this first time they heard it from Pain. from the Hungarian, so you're right. The value goes up. It goes up, <laughs> forming deep bonds. Yeah. Well, so with regards to let's talk a little bit, I guess, with with, with the options for expanding expanding your collection. No, we've talked about events. We've talked mm-hmm. about the challenge crate. We've tried to talk a little bit as far as like. For smart yeah. expenditure of your gold. Yeah. Kind of going back yeah. to the neutral part in regards to that, because that's a big thing. There's a lot of there's a lot of good neutrals spread across all the factions. We mentioned the, using the challenge crate. If you oh, had yeah. to pick an expansion or two of neutrals or four neutrals specifically, that these are just this is just full of neutrals that you're going to want as a new player. What would you recommend? You know, and this sucks to say for new players. Um, mal, uh, what is it called? Malevolence. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah malevolence. It has a lot of really good neutrals hidden in it, but in order to get to it, you got to reach into a um a later faction. I don't say the bad. You're getting blood angels out of it. You're getting white scars out of it, and you're getting runestorm out of it. All strong uh, factions. Well, blood angels are okay. Cause My, stuff like Kai. I uh, I have like a soft spot for. Word bearers. Mm. So, like, um, as, as far as like, yeah, as far as chaos goes as a neutral faction, it's really fascinating to see how you can kind of target um, mm. certain chapters and end up with a very strong neutral pool, regardless really of what you know you're really setting out to do. Uh, neutral card wise goes, but if you are trying to build like neutral specific stuff, I mentioned earlier, I love Sergeant Cork. Like the Solar Auxilia are so. Okay. finely tuned to today's meta like i highly recommend uh the the crate where they first appear yeah uh, those guys are just uh, totally aces well um, here's the thing with solar auxilla they appear in every crate yeah yeah th- i'm sorry the, the ones that are like um not the ones that they kind of retcon to be solar auxilia that were already existing cards we talk about the, the ones the, that the they create where it's like this is these are cards for solar auxilia now this is a solar auxilia yeah card. yeah yeah correct yeah yeah because they did add the 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 type to like some older cards, but yeah, the ones where they yeah. hit hard. Yeah. They they added to anything that was just called Solar Auxilla in the game. Yeah, almost oh. every single one of those cards said Laz Rifle Squad or, or whatever the three yeah. actually okay. called, and then it would say comma Solar Auxilla. Yeah, ba- basic boys with guns. Yeah, throw them <laughs> in there. Yeah, you, and um, with Terry, yeah, you've got uh, so so. What's her name? Sorkasin. Yeah, Nora. 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 Nora, Nora Sur- yes, she, great legendary, fantastic legendary for especially if you're doing Solar Auxilia. There's no reason not to have her. You've got Marcus yeah. Valerius. You've got Katsuhiro. Uh, yes. Then you've got the the uh, the, the good thick Vexilarius, who is reducing cost. You've got forty fifth yeah. section. Like, there's no negatives with the stuff that is in that expansion specifically the terra expansion and then yeah you can follow it up with the next two expansions if you really want to flesh out and was, get a couple more you know was noira in terra i thought that was in gif ah uh, was she in gif i don't think so he, I, she came pretty late for the game no you're right she wasn't she was in galaxy and flames i'm looking at her card expansion right now she's a galaxy and flames but strategic reserves was not 
True. Granted, Strategic Reserves has has been uh, taken down a peg, and quite frankly, I think Terran Defenses is better. But at this yeah. at this stage in game, that just is phew, that's an awesome card. Yeah, yeah, and especially from the perspective of a new player, right? Like you can definitely have a very functional neutral solar deck very rapidly if you focus that that expansion. Yeah, and I mean when you're looking at the cards too. I think there are certain there are certain factions that work really well without high legendary count, you know. Yeah. And neutrals, I I'd argue maybe Mechanicum. You if you if you were set out to do a very specific deck could be a high high rarity count, but when you're talking just infantry, like you can do commons and rares so easy and just have a good warlord that supports it. Whether it's Cork, whether it's Lucretia, whether it's Fail. Whether it's uh, any of the word like Argal Tal, Corfeiron, if you're yeah. doing cultists, like there's when I started out, I had Ornatov. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. There's a lot of neutral warlords where you don't have to hit a lot because they're really fully functional at card generation by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're making stuff where even if you don't have it in your deck, you can like, wow, he made a Jubok. This is Grand Duke Mordature. I don't have this yeah. card. Like you can be excited. And you've got this thirty hit point warlord, but he's he's putting out stuff, he's putting down front line, and then you're playing with commons and rares and just like just knocking it out the park. It's totally yeah. possible. And I would I would yeah. I would encourage people to and that's one thing when I want to talk a little bit about discouraging things for, for collections, like things that people need to be aware of if they're jumping in or they want to start a collection. Because there are things oh, that yeah. you need to be aware of. There are those factions that are <laughs> rare intensive. They're not great for, for not necessarily beginner player level, but beginner collection level. And yeah. then there's also... Don't play Custodes. Very uh, legendary intensive yes, factions. Yeah. And then there's also those, those factions that are the reverse, where it's like, man, if you want to start off, have a good time, win some games, and do it without needing all those legendaries. There's some key factions to keep in mind. Um, yeah. Just off the top of your guys' head, what would you say would be the first faction you could think of that you would recommend people stay away from as a high high rarity expansion or high rarity faction? Oh, just custodies. Easily. You maybe because I know a couple of people who managed it as a new player can scrape by within the Sow deck that's running mainly commons simply for the precog. But that's all you got going for you. It's a custodies as a deck requires a lot of like very key cards. You're gonna yeah. need your like, you're gonna need your uh, Michaelor Michaelor I don't remember his name Michaelor yeah uh, two three yeah Michaelor like you're Curtis. gonna need yeah. yeah you're gonna need your uh, hunting eagles you're gonna need this you're gonna need that yeah and, not only that but they demand like epic and legendary neutrals as well to like oh, really yeah. pop off <laughs> yeah they hurt. I would say avoid Ultramarines. Um, really? Just because, yeah, I've tried to make uh, like a low Terra Ultramarines deck lacking the quest and the like some of the key legendaries, and it's just like nothing at that point compensates or is as good as like Stelloc, for example. Like there's nothing True. you can play at that mana as good as him. Like the, the quest itself can make it so that, you know, it being legendary, you know, like a lot of the other cards in your deck can be a null factor, but you need it. Mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. for that to exist i Sorry. definitely agree though if you're running a low like around low terra a low terra is the punching point for most decks so i would definitely agree that if you're running like a bare bones ultramarines there you're not going to succeed uh, gonna... you know i'm i'm sorry yeah, i totally missed the question the question was for new players yeah but i mean you're still not wrong because it's pretty easy to get the terra well realistically a new player can get the terra in a couple days and if their collection isn't up to snuff by then they can hit a brick wall really quickly. yeah um, it, it's a good I actually thing. did something similar. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think you're right though with the Ultramarines because you've got Stellic, but you've also got McCraig's Honor. That's a legendary, mm -hmm. but then you've got the uh, the Epics with regards to their yeah. um, Apothecary, Apothecary Theon, and then you've got the uh, Seven Drop. Yeah, you've got Logos, Lectora. Like, there's some very good. Uh, you've got Marcellus, like which was it's kind of your your fallback, like classic Ultramarine style. If you don't have those, you're really banking on the commons and rares to pick up and and support you with some you know practicals and theoreticals that are randomly generated, and you're not really you're not gonna you're just missing key key cards that that you might make the longevity of that. Yeah, exactly. Whether it's McCrag's Honor, 
or you're going to fall back on the even the I mean the rare is not as good but you could fall back on the rare but you'll feel it because you don't have those strong troops that hit the board keep your board alive come out hard come out fast or the tactic that just wins the game yeah yeah there's a lot of factions that have like legendaries and epics that are like give your warlord a relentless or a um what's the other one i'm sorry relentless resolution resolution yeah give your warlord a relentless or a resolution ability or a come into play when your troops come into play ability or like an end of turn ability like the the stalwart defenders for uh iron yeah War, where it's just the the rarity is such a wall because those cards are so critical for the identity of the faction to really pop off in some cases mm-hmm. and yeah, it's like for ultramarine specifically it's like with the lower rarity cards you're stuck with vehicles and right now, what does everyone do good against? Yeah, with the ordnance yeah, out there. Or, yeah. or vehicles. Yeah. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. yeah, they're or, currently in a state of limbo. I would say for me, like, if I'm recommending somebody to stay away from a faction, and it, it's still a throwback, it's still a little bit of a throwback, but I cannot recommend somebody start up with Night Lords. Even though they've yeah. gotten the tune up, like they have a lot of epics. Even if I'm not counting the legendaries, which is the the Raven, Mercy and Forgiveness, Nostromo are great, but their epics, Recon Talon is is almost like I won't say requirement, but is such a huge power card. Yeah. You know? Yes. And then you've got Reaper of Caldrac. You've got if you want to play like the Dirty Fighter um, you've got the uh, like they've got some great new commons oh. and rares or changes to their commons and rares, but those 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 early epics like make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Cal- if you're not doing Caljack on six or like a Night Scythes, if that's what your deck does, mm-hmm. you, it's a feels bad. It's a feels bad. <laughs> you know, it's it really is. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely have to agree on that one. There's some cards you'll need. Night Lords are real bad for that, especially. You legendaries are almost necessary, and well, it's not as bad as nowadays. But I would definitely say mercy and forgiveness is like needed in most of their decks that aren't just Sevatar. Yeah, it's it's better than it used yeah. to be, but it still oh, yeah. is very much like, hey, yeah, don't don't try with that first. Don't don't yeah. don't dive into Night Lords. Like, pick something else. Like, honestly, if you want to go aggro, and I hate I hate pointing this way, but I mean, mentioned it like World Eaters. Oh. World Eaters is the easiest. Possibly mm-hmm. uh, the easiest fa- faction to buy cards for because first off, all you need is the warlord and the two and the yep. two speeders. That's it. You need you need three cards from that faction, maybe four if we count sweep in advance. I was that, about to say, yeah, get get the sweeping advance common, and that's it. That's it. Like everything else, you can do neutrals, you can do card draw, you can do mortar strikes for, you can do defensive satellites, informer networks, void, whatever you want to throw in there that doesn't have to be high rarity. That's it. That's all you need in there. Like, if you want to, then later on add an Argus Brond or a Wrath. Great, cool, manifest destiny. Fine, but you could run a very successful, very efficient World Eaters deck with the lowest rarity possible. And whether it's Shabrandar or Karn, you'll be fine. I would, I would recommend Drager. And if you get Angron, then he can be a legendary, and you'll be okay too. Yeah, you don't feel bad about that. Yeah, same is true. I think for uh, Rom or um, I the fun, I don't even remember the guy that becomes Rom. Yes, Argo Tal. Argo Tal. Yeah, there we go. But yeah. uh, he's he operates in the same wheelhouse. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The word bearers. Just, uh, I would say. I would say the word bearers themselves as a faction, like yeah, they they've got a couple good. Legendaries in terms of epics, I don't know. Like, I mean, I guess if you're doing Zardu Layak and you're going really word very heavy, maybe you've got a couple more epics. But I think they really are a common refaction. And then you throw in the neutral, especially now that yeah. these new cultist yeah. cards. Yeah, Corfair oh, on. You, you can have a very functional Corfair on deck with just a few chaos rares and commons, and then the, the some good word bears cards. The problem with that sentence is it becomes an oxymoron in of itself. <laughs> the functional Corferon deck is not a functional deck, but it's a functional Corferon deck. Yeah, I, I have fun with my Corferon deck. It can it can punch at low Terra, but that's about it. Word bearers are in a bad state of limbo. But for Rom, if you play Word Bearers purely for Rom, well, first I'm disappointed in you, but that's beside the point. It will work. <laughs> You'll do fine. There are Roms in high Terra constantly. Yeah, oh yeah. Rom's just an ever-present threat. He's good. 
I mean, you don't need a lot of word bear cards for him anyways, because 15 of your yeah, cards are not going to be worth That's right. Half your deck has yeah. to be chaos to begin with. And, and you're probably going to want some Imperial Army. Yeah. Some infantry. You're probably going to want some there, Some heal. And you're good to go. And then you're going to toss in some chaos. Yeah, you're going to toss in maybe some Astartes. It's really personal preference on which Astartes you throw in. Not really. You're going to have Ash and Circle. You're going to have Jasmine. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have um, Zesigul. I think that's two. Episodes. Zed. You're going to have the bikes. These are not optional. These are mandatory. <laughs> which is but, which is why <laughs> maybe it's not the best for new players. Yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of it's but a lot of it's rares. I would say almost every word car- word bearer card you need is either a rare or common. And then there's a couple epics just sprinkled in. The the epic ashen circles sometimes makes it feel bad if you don't have those because like just like with the ultramarines, you just feel so bad playing something else at that mana slot, energy slot, not man, <laughs> mana slot. <laughs> well, and especially when it comes time for like cards that close the game, I think that's the big difference. Like especially when you've got like hey, this is a good epic. This is a good support epic or legendary that. Uh, but you want to play at this time if you've got it. But when it comes to cards that can close the game, the Ashen Circle is a five that can hit fa- fast if you want to. A lot of time people just use it just to do seven damage to a troop and you know two to the board. But you, it's yeah. still a fast. All you need. Yeah, it's still a fast troop for five. You know. Yeah. Uh, or you or you've got McCrag's Honor, which is seven perfections fly, adventurous spirit. Like those closers. If you don't have mm-hmm. those, you. Your end game is radically different for those factions until you get it. Yeah, that's why Night Lords without the Raven is a, is a good avoid. You're going to hit so many games where you're one to eight damage short of winning the yeah. game until you yes. get the Raven. Well, I would say that Sevatar can be fine, but if you're playing at one of the less meta picks like Modrin, you need the Raven. Yeah. You- you need it, or your 30 HP is just slowly ticking down, and you're not finding the damage to reach for, which sucks. But that's just the nature of the game. Yep. It's an hard, yeah. it's a hard game. And that's, and that's why, happens. you know, like the World Eaters, again, that reach, it comes with a rare and a common. That's... Uh, the, psh, look at that. How easy is that? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I hate... I, I'm, I'm really not trying to upsell the World Eaters here, guys, but I can't not in, when we're talking... What Chuck is trying games. to say is he demands more Karns be part of the community. I think we need to have <laughs> more uh, more variety in regards to their card pool. I'm not going to advocate for a massive World Eaters buff, but I will say this. <laughs> Erlen has not been seen in a very long time since he lost his card. And you know what? I think it's time that he comes back and rips some people's faces off. <laughs> Maybe that's deserved, though. Have you ever considered that? No, no, I had no problems with Erlen. I never had problems with Erlen. Never. <laughs> I joined in post Erlen's death, so I never had problems with Erlen. Yeah, same. I have no idea know. who this is. Uh, it's a world leader, rare world. Leader. He's the rare world. Yeah, yeah, just apothecary, right? No, he's yeah. a captain. Uh, but he deals. Oh, okay. yeah. He he pays two energy and he just deals straight three damage to the enemy warlord. It doesn't matter if they're stealth or not. So. Oh, sorry, sorry. He just has the red eye thing, right? Yes. Oh, well, yeah. 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 So typically, you just boom, pay two, three damage, pay two, three damage, and like you're taking him down. <laughs> like they can't avoid it. They can't ward. They can't. You know, like it's gonna happen. And yeah. You just play two turns behind on curve, no problem, because yeah. you're. Because your world is so bad. I'm burning so hard. Lightning bolt. Yeah, that's it. So he had an extra card. They took it away. They also changed Armor of Mars, which was kind of a crutch for him because he had 30 health points. So when he hit six energy, he could play Armor of Mars, and the old Armor of Mars would go back to your hand and increase cost by one. So then the next turn, he could then use his ability and Armor of Mars back, and, and so on and so forth, like and just whittle you down. But he lost his tools, and he's not been seen since. <laughs> Some say he's dead. Some say he was indeed lost in his phone three. It's true. <laughs> uh, wait, wasn't that one of Creed's choices for World Cup? What, early? I remember he... Yeah, he picked some stupid cards. Was he, that one of them? No, he picked Zardu Layak. He did not pick Erlen, though. Uh, that would have been funny, though. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> know if funny would be the word I would use. No, I would have used funny. I would have used daring. Derek, brave. That's right. Uh, insane <laughs> is a good option. Too. I mean, I, I would, I would applaud him as much as if he p- played Drager. Like either of those two, Drager's actually in a better spot than Erlen because he's got five extra health. It's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Drager was actually the first warlord I ever played, just because he was so un rarity reliant. Yeah, 
yeah, he, he doesn't do anything like he just thought, oh, get plus one, plus one, and remember all your troops. That's it. So what do you got? You got your bikes. You got your... It used to just be Astartes. It, and they made it so that it's troops now. But, I mean, okay, cool. These these common 3-4 guys? How about these rare 2-4 guys? These rare 3-3 three, three guys? Like, yeah. Enough, I like a Vent Draeger more than the Draeger we got simply for the extra card. Eh. Meh. I mean, don't be wrong. Be fair, he still has K1. He, it, it, his ability is... His ability, quite frankly, I think should cost one and get plus one, plus one to world leader Astartes, and I'd be happy with it. The plus it two would be very like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a bit too much. It is really fun when you get Gorefather on him, and he's got Cleave three though. Oh, ah. yeah, a warlord with Cleave is really nice. Yeah, mm. it's a great way to help uh, you know make sure that no survivors really gets going. Yeah, mm-hmm. a, a lot of meta cards are very rarity intensive that deal with like stealth and ward and stuff like that. So it's good to have a blanket ability for low cost to deal with that. Yeah, especially when it's when it's built in. It's not something that you have got to draw or fetch. You're like, all right, it may take me a turn longer, but I will <laughs> get rid of your one two stealth because I can drag. Or if you got ricochet, you're like, guess what? Turn one, it's dead. No, no, no stealth sentence for you. Like your little uh, yeah. stealthy boy. What's his? What's what's the one two with Raven Guard popping off here? It's oh, I Numus Recon. No Numus Recon for you. Yeah, I hate those guys. But yeah. yeah, we should all know what they are, but we don't. Listen, <laughs> I don't know things by name. I know them by hate. Eh, I know, <laughs> but it's more efficient. Most of them I can identify image wise. It when you get to those little niche ones, I gotta like, what is that name or that one? Like, do you know what Corvaden Recon is? Corv- uh, no. Is it a flank? Get- no, it's the, th- I, it's I, the three cost stealth of the Raven one. Guard that gives Sentence 1 when it attacks a troop. Oh, that oh, wasn't even oh. what I was going to guess. I thought it was the Ping troop that they just got. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that uh, <laughs> that one is Solok Squad. I'm just in the Raven ah, Guard there. pool, so. Yeah. My That's brain where- tells me that Raycon means it has flank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so some degree where he's like, hey, you know, flanking, fasting, you know, stealth is not what you would so stealth and then deal sentenced. Yeah. Anyways. Ambusher. So, any other factions that you would recommend for people looking to dive in? Like, easy faction to get going, get kicking. Um, any faction where the rare warlord produces troops. Yeah. And I, I was... mean produce and put in the play. That's a good, that's produce a good hand uh, yeah. recommendation. Right? Well, the one, I think it's the Iron Warriors that puts a vehicle in your hand and gives it plus zero, plus one is pretty good for starting out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was I another was that was another guy good. I used early on as well for that very reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think and he's rare, so yeah, you get him real quick. I think I think that's a good recommendation because for the same reason, very similar, like we talked about with Ornitov or the events where you you can get cards that you don't have access to typically, but mm-hmm. also because if you're starting out and maybe you've only got the Warlord. And eight cards from the faction to begin with because you bought a couple packs. And you're like, oh, cool. I've got, you know, Precision Bombardment and these two lame common Astartes. But I've got Draeger. Cool. I'll get going. Pack a bunch of neutrals. And those Iron Hand ve- or the Iron Warriors vehicles, Iron Hands vehicles is a different story. Iron Warriors vehicles, <laughs> you can get playing and actually get a feel like, hey, there's a couple here that I really like. Or at the very least, like, hey, cool. Like, I'm making these cards. And they're not in my deck, and my deck has got a whole bunch of other cards that I don't, you know, that I can use too. Or you've got Learning a yeah. lesson about value. <laughs> yeah. Or you've got other other guys like uh, oh, what's it? Defenders of Caliban, Zahariel, making yeah, the, the two that, three. That's who I was thinking. Of. Yeah, yeah, that's very powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. A two three that does nothing would be amazing. But you know, <laughs> the Imperial fists that makes the two two. Yeah. Pollux is also very Pollux, good. Pollux, yeah. You've got yeah. Latara, who makes flanking Garadon front lines. Squads. Yep. Yeah, really? that's amazing. Tybalt Mar, awesome. I was about to say, Tybalt Mar making Abacol squads, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mar produces some good bodies. Syapha Morag, making a 1-4 front line. There's a lot. I wouldn't say there's one for every faction, but uh, there, there's sure. one in many factions for you to dip your toe in without yeah. needing to have a lot of cards to build a competent deck, because... Hey, you always have the option to make that true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, along that same vein, I would highly recommend Warlords that have the ability to kind of carry games on their own. Like, if you do happen to get lucky and get Sigismund, you can build a pretty easy Sigismund deck, just focusing on him. Same with, um, like, if you're really low on um, Agents of Sigilite, but you do happen to get 
his his version, you know, there. Talking about Rubio? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I said his version. Yeah, Tyler's Rubio, because yes. that's basically the same thing. Um, and then also the Sisters oh. of Silence have uh, Amandra Kamandera, who just can continuously make the tactic, which is also easy to draw using a very low card, neutral card pool. Like a lot, there's a lot of common and rare neutral card draw that you can use with those warlords. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her, I highly recommend those guys. And Mandara Kendall with her Greater Destiny. That is, there's a lot of ways that you can build her. Obviously, you know, the more sisters you get, you can kind of toolbox her. But early on, if you just want to focus on a Greater Destiny build, you know, like you can get her attack up there crazy. And as long as you don't overdraw, it will always be in your deck. That's a, it'll a, always be there. Yeah. Ten energy. At, at, it caps at ten energy. So ten energy, you still gain plus one attack and heal three. Yeah. She can't deck herself out unless she draws extra. Yes. Which is nice. Not a lot of warlords can say they can't purposely deck themselves she's, out. She's got a greater destiny to play. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think of any other like good recommendation, fa- purely faction-wise, for a new player, and I think that covers most of it. Yeah, it's just kind of... Just things that require less cards. Kind of, kind of scrolling sure through here, I think more. one thing else to maybe steer away from might not necessarily be high rarity, but the combo based factions and, and the custodes are both a high rarity and a combo based but oh yeah um i would argue that thousand sons are is a combo based faction raven guard is absolutely a combo based faction the knights and the knights are the knights are not a bad a bad i mean they they can mix and match in terms of rarity goes like obviously if they get some good epics they're in a better spot but i feel they're very combo based too like you have to have if you've got the right tools in your deck you can go off but if you don't have the right tools to build that deck, it's just not going to work at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas, whereas the Titans, and we kind of talked about this earlier on, the Titans, you don't yeah. like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll make do with what I got on the board, and then we'll figure out the pieces later. Yeah, they, yeah. Come, with, they come fully loaded. Not, maybe with not the best weapons available to them, but they do come fully loaded. Mm-hmm. And the White Scars are another combo based faction for the most part. You know, like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. Streak, streak is old enough. Yeah, streak or no streak. Like, you, you, you want to fast, you want to flank, you want to circle your cards back in your deck. Like, if you don't have the pieces to get the longevity out or maximize a combo, whether it's with Outriders or uh, Hibu Khan's Sagar Maison or any of the bouncing cards, you, you're just not going to have a sufficient deck. Like, you have to, you've got to have the pieces to build it at the very least. Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. Like it's pretty easy to tell looking at a lot of the white scars cards that uh, if you can not tell what to do with this immediately, then it's not for you. Mm-hmm. And I, I was that exact way with a lot of the white scars cards. I mean, that's fair. Not every faction will be for every person. Not everyone wants to watch a troop whose stats are slowly just getting bigger and bigger because that's just the word bear play style. But I enjoy it. I like to see the number go up and then get hit with so hard removal. But you know, <laughs> oh my chaos goes. spawn. <laughs> Hmm. It's something a lot of people forget whenever they recommend a faction or saying that not everyone has the same play style as you or everyone. Yeah. Well, if it, someone can go play night, play night, play night. I don't like the way they control though. And I think that's something I know we've talked about this way back in the past, Axel, because th- this topic was very similar to what we talked. I, w- I want to say like our episode two or three building a collection oh, yeah. A to Z, A to Z. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> a big thing to keep in mind, because we talked about, like, well, what, what faction does somebody want to play, and then how should they go about collecting them? But there is a big thing for people to sometimes uh, understand is, that's great that you like that wow. faction. Do you like that playstyle in this game? Because there's, there can be two different things. You could really like word bears, but it turns out you don't like troop zoo decks, or you don't like the fact that, like, oh, that's it? Like, I gotta go... Like I go cultist, I was thinking something differently. Or like, oh, I really <laughs> I really like world eaters. Okay. Don't you don't need world eaters cards. What but that's I wanna do world eater troop things. Like, no, that's not how they play. Like you gotta be aggro if you're not an aggro guy. I think most people yeah. I think most people who like Alpha Legion would because they like Alpha Legion would probably like that playstyle, but that doesn't necessarily ring true. You could like what the Alpha Legion does, but maybe the idea of playing control and stun and manipulation is just not something that you're good at, and you're actually better suited at playing something more straightforward like Sons of Horus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly enough, when the Alpha Legion event 
uh, or the Alpha Legion campaign rolled around recently, um, it was almost unplayable if you took the classic Alpha Legion approach of control and deck stuff. Yes. Like, you basically had to yeah. play, you had to play a tempo, aggro Alpha Legion deck with, like, the headhunters and lots of troop presence and stuns and stuff. Otherwise, you couldn't win. Ghost and I, I, I yep. played it. Yep. Yeah, I played it, and I was like, wow, this is a side of Alpha Legion I've never seen. I wish it worked. <laughs> I mean, it but can I work if, if you know what you're doing. The, the trick oh, is, yeah. you gotta... you gotta Half of the Alpha Legion game, and this is just kind of a sidebar, but I mean, half of the Alpha Legion game is literally tailing your p- play style in the middle of the game to your opponent. Because you cannot, you could take the exact same Alpha Legion deck. Uh, it's it's a good, well rounded Alpha Legion deck, and against a World Eater, not that half your cards are going to be useless, but half your cards you're no longer going to play as soon as you can play them. You're going to play them once you've got two or three pieces on the board set. Whereas yeah. if you're playing against another like the Death Guard or Imperial Fist, I'm going to play those cards as soon as I can and get go and get the pieces set. Like, it just depends on what you're playing. Yeah. yeah. Very Rather modular legion. Mm-hmm. I've had um, troop Ingo pack do relatively fine in High Terra because I'm like right on the cups of High Terra. Um, mm. But once we got Sheed, that's when the fun begins. That should be very interesting, and uh, hopefully we yeah. get him within the next uh, month or two. Hopefully, well, yeah. we will have to wait and see. Time. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for a lot of the uh, event warlords for some of the legions. They're very cool, very thematically pleasing. Mm-hmm. Well, most of them. We, the <laughs> Ultramarine one is um, well. It's fitting because it's the most boring one of, out of all of them. Yeah, not, <laughs> not Marasaur for the folks at home because we've all but confirmed we're not getting Marasaur. We're gonna it's, get um, Mercer. It's gonna happen. We're gonna make it work. <laughs> no, no, we, no, we're getting Gorod. Ah, you know, you know, you know that when we get Oliver here next week, Mister E. G. Mister E. G. Himself, but I, I have a gun. Let's bend his arm. Let's make it make that event a choice, and uh, let's see what happens. At least let us. You understand? <laughs> choice will be in heavy quotation marks, right? I have no problem with that, but at least put it out there. Like, be up front. Be up front with it. Yeah. <laughs> Let the, the people the think. I, oh, no, no, no. That was it. Let the people think. Yeah, let the people think. Oh. There's actually an option. <laughs> yes. Okay. I was just gonna say one of the reasons yeah. I especially don't think we're getting Mar- uh, Marisol. Is that he was given to a TO for like a, a challenge run for a tournament, which they've only ever done that before with like campaign warlords and non collect any warlord we're not gonna get. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't like to see. Plus, Gorod had um, for a deck deal. Yeah, I've seen his. I've seen his art for the uh, for the deck deal slash banner sales. So it's very likely that they've already got him primed, and we might not even get the choice. He's just here. You go. There he is. He's dropped. To be fair, they primed that in during events. Before. Before, which always hurts. <laughs> like the event's not even done yet, and they s- s- told us which side has already won because they showed us in the deck deals being in the code. Those, were- yeah. <laughs> Trust us. Right, and then that that implies that like it's loaded from the beginning, right? Like, like well, there's... not necessarily because they activate it like a week later. That just means they looked at the results and went, "All right, guys, there's no way they're turning this around." Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. If it's like an eighty twenty split or something like that. We've turned those odds before, though. The community has done it. It, it can be done. It's it's the it's the exception, but it is possible. Yes. What was the la- What was the biggest turnover we've ever done? Was it was it actually viral bombs? Not viral bombs. Virus warfare, whatever the fuck it was called. Viral okay. bombs, I think, is the name of the. Card. I, I don't think that was the, no, no, no. the last one. I think that Sometimes. was. That was. I mean, are, you mean like the biggest? Like, oh wow, this isn't going to happen. That that, that was happen. like it was ninety percent in favor, and it turned around to sixty percent against. That was big when it happened. Yeah, I think that might be the biggest one, but I think part of that too was that event. They made a very significant change really fast. Like nerfs and reinforcements, right? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Where it's like, oh, we changed this warlord's ability. And you're like, oh, well, that changes. That warlord is no longer the option, period. Like, that yeah, kind of a change. Um, that actually happened when I was playing an event where they introduced Tybalt Mar. Um, Tybalt Mar at first was, like, way too strong. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, someone's screaming in the background. Jesus. No, it's, it's all good. It's just hit an apex. Um, yeah, no, Tybalt Mara used to produce a 3-2, which I don't understand who thought yeah. that was okay. I don't know. Yeah. I, I want to find who thought that was okay, and I want to I wanna shake him and ask him why. Why have you forsaken me? I think it would have been even better if it was the 3-2 that drew a card with Backlash. 
Like, let's just go yeah, all the yeah. way. Let's just go all the way. <laughs> yeah, it actually costs less than the troop to play. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like, why draw? Card? I be that's, a, that's a better ability than horse's ability at that point. And, and and also make his battle honor give the mark to all your all yes. your Astartes. Perfect. Also- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's the what's the nerf? Lower his hit points, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, like bring him down to thirty hit points. There you go. Perfect. Balanced is all things should be. So um, I, I'm trying to think, like with the uh, have we covered all the bases with collecting, or at least um, tips, strategies. I, I actually there. have a, a tip I would like to offer. It's more of like a, a, an important pitfall to avoid. When I first started playing, um, I, I really misused the gem shop. I just like mm. bought literally all of the cheap cards that I saw, like literally all of the 20 gem cards. And we Same. touched earlier on how like certain factions have certain critical cards that make the faction go from like playable to very, very good. Like You're going to get results out of the faction now. So... I would recommend to all players out there, avoid just scooping up as many commons as you can. Many of them are unusable. Many, many of them are unplayable, especially when ones from older factions roll around. There's no point to inflate your collection that way when you're going to be opening multiple random packs across multiple mediums anyways. Definitely save your gems. Shout out to my homies, the word bearers and world eaters that have the exact same common in their uh, card pool, and it's garbage in both of them. (laughs) <laughs> the the two three was unstoppable for two energy. It's the yeah. exact same card in both of them, and it's garbage. Yeah, so Woo! that's that's my uh, kernel of wisdom. Don't do what I do. Don't just collect all the commons across all the factions. Target the epics and the legendaries you want. You will be surprised how fast you save up four hundred gems or sixteen hundred gems if you're not buying crap. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good point. Like when I started, and obviously, like I mentioned earlier, I mean, my experience is going to be a little bit different from yours because I started and we just had four expansions. We just had four factions, not four expansions, four factions. And then yeah. the only neutral warlords that existed were Ornitov, Kelber, Hal, and uh, Ingathel. So there was only three neutral warlords and the neutral card pool was much smaller. But when I was, I would save up gens, what I would do, and this is a strategy that I used all the way up until I want to say extermination. And then then at that point, I probably reached a point where I had all the cards except for the new cards. So what I would do would I, I made a list of each faction of what the cards I needed. Mm -hmm. And then I'd either start with getting a warlord for the faction. Like if I didn't have a warlord, I'd pick the warlord up because that's the way I can play them. And then after that, it was like, okay, I need two legendaries from this faction. Neither of them, are necessary so if it if it pops up and i've got buku gems to spend i'll pick it up but I, there's actually three legendaries that i that are much more key to playing the faction and the other you know sons of horus or empress children than getting these two legendaries for death guard and for world leaders so then i'd yeah. i just let the rotation go i'd see it come i'd see it go and i would pick up the one that i knew was was good the problem with that strategy now is the rotation is so massive. It's not a great yeah. strategy. It, I, I do think it still does help for you to, as a player, looking to get your collection. Look at the legendaries that you need the most, not just of the faction that you're playing, but in typical, like, hey, these three or this one legendary out of each faction is the legendary I want to get first. And then when it shows up, hopefully you've got 1,600 gems. So then you can say, hey, all right, pay, uh, the uh, uh, Paragon Spear, boom, that's the one. That's the the number one legendary I need of the Custodes. Or, all right, McCraig's Honor, Pride of the Emperor, Vengeful Spear. I'm mean, using the, the classic staples, but like those are the cards that like, first go to. That one is the one you get in the shop before you get any others. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. 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 Um- usually a good rule of thumb for the gem shop since gems are for a long period of the game so hard to come by is if you're unsure if you should buy it don't yeah if it's not something that you're absolutely sure is fantastic you know yeah there's so many mediums to communicate with the community you can just literally open up the chat page and be like hey guys what's the best legendary for this faction yep and there's there's uh several players both on the discord and on the Reddit, who break down the daily shop, typically to say, hey, these are worth getting or these are not. 
And if it's if it's a legendary that's your, your number one, but you're just not going to play the faction, or you don't have any warlords for the faction, then skip it. Like there's, you're you're going to spend sixteen hundred gems to pocket a card for who knows how many months before you actually use it. You do yeah, want to spend smartly. I will say though, if a Primarch's in the shop and you ever have a passing interest to in playing the faction, assuming the Primarch isn't jokingly bad, and that's a thing among the community like Lorgar, you, you <laughs> should just grab it because it's almost not going to come back. Yeah, yeah. It's just worth it at that point. Yeah, I, I would say most of the Primarchs are definitely like an enjoyable experience. And they're and just, Lorgar. if it's in the shop, <laughs> if it's in the shop, it's the time to get it. Because they don't come in the shop frequently, even on rotation, no. they don't. So, yeah. unless you are blessed with luck, you may it may be months before you get uh, get them in a crate. I mean, shoot, it was a year and a half before I got Angron, and I had to get the alt art Angron for me to get Angron. Like I got to the point where like I, he was the only card of Isfon three I didn't have, and I wasn't going to spend gold to buy Isfon three crates. I was like, there's, there's no point. There's so many legendaries there. I'm never going to get the one. I'll just wait. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. And if you can can avoid that hurdle and you're like, oh, Jagatai Khan, eh, he's not great, but he is a prime mark. He does yeah. let me play white scars. Yeah, okay, give uh, it a dial. A lot of new players face a very interesting challenge because a lot of very powerful legendaries exist in older sets as like one or two ofs, and that's it. That's the only redeemable cards uh, from certain old expansions, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm thinking mm -hmm. Melgator mostly, right? Like, uh, you would hate to have to open crates for, for Melgator, even though he's good in, you know, 90% of decks, which is really why all these tools to help you target things are so good and so interesting. Yeah, yeah. but I mean... Like, sucks, for, sucks for new players. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, Melgator, yeah. Jubok, I would say Duke Mortar, and then if I had to pick another neutral out of the out of, out of Isfahn 3... Like neutral, shoot, a uh, Coral Zeth. Coral Zeth is good. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there's there's a, there's a lot that aren't. I mean, no, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, what's the tech priest assassin begins with an R? Remy. Uh, that, yes, that's a trap. Uh, that card is a trap. <laughs> she used to be really good before all the anti stealth basically dealt with three health, like Joker, yeah. Joker Company, and Informer Network plus a Warlord ability. Yeah. Three health is such a bad break point for yeah. any amount of energy. Yeah, past is like and three. Uh, it, she's good in event if you're like Imperial Army Sergeant, which that card is just permanent hard removal at that point. Yeah. Outside of that uh, niche that is very fun, that card is just lost the tempo. She's is that the guy that can give flank? Yes. Uh, yeah. Plus one. Yeah. Flank. yeah. Yeah. Very powerful. He's a very fun event, Orlar. You don't see him much. Uh, you don't see him in much events. Because um, I guess Evergill just forgets he exists, sadly. <laughs> but when they do remember his existence, uh, usually that one isn't balanced perfect. That's fine. <laughs> Basic. Who would win in the fight? Uh, this legendary Primarch or Imperial Sergeant Boy? <laughs> right. Exactly. Just guy with last. He's flanking the. He's flanking those bombs. I can't remember their name off the top of my the head. Melt bombs. Time melt bomb. Yeah. <laughs> he's flanking time melt bombs, and it's yeah. it's cool. It's like a Batman versus Superman scenario where he lures the space marine into a corner where there's a melt -a bomb on a rope waiting for him. It's it's basically Mar Home Alone, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> horses he's the, taking a time to the melt -a -bomb Pesci. that he's supposed to set up. Yeah. And he's just chucking it at you. He's he's written <laughs> down his uh, his battle plans and crayons. I mean, yeah, it sounds like a classic Imperial Guardsman. I mean, I feel like that's a good nineties movie that that just waiting to happen. Like let's let's make it happen. <laughs> Horus <laughs> alone. Oh god damn it! <laughs> I thought we'd go an episode without pain. I, you know I what? Mean, give me give mistaken. me some time with Macaulay Culkin, and I can make a thumbnail. You know, yeah, <laughs> slap a kitty and helmet on him. Yeah, I like that. You can make it work. I'm, I like that. That sounds powerful. <laughs> <laughs> put like Joe Pesci yelling inside of like Angeron's uh, it, butcher's nails. <laughs> it puts on a totally different mean right when he gets his hair lit on fire. Like, I mean, that's uh, that's pretty forty oh, k. This is writing itself. I think I think we're on the right path. Like we we just basically take the comedy Mars. and then we make it like really brutal. Like you know he like uh, was it Marv like burns his hand on the uh, on the hot door handle and it's actually just like yeah. melts his hand right off and yeah. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> I, I I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. Oh, well, no, I understand what's going on. That's why I don't like You it. take that tarantula, right, like... the, that tarantula <laughs> scene on the face, and it's actually like it's a, uh, a mechandendrite. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is a horror movie, right? <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, this, this is grimdark. Yeah, exactly. But it yeah. depends whose point of view you're following throughout the movie, whether it's a horror movie or a light-hearted slapstick comedy. <laughs> also, then, switching rapidly. The score is awesome with that. <laughs> my my uh, I'm War Master and my 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 father's home alone? <laughs> <laughs> Home Alone is just one point of view swap away from being Saw. Oh, yeah, that, that's for sure. Like, I mean, <laughs> let's be real. Like, he put, he, some really devious thought in some of those traps. Yeah, yeah. The, an expert went over and was like, most of these are lethal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, nail gun to the face. I don't know. That doesn't sound like it's now, safe. Now, most of these sound Iron lethal. Iron to the face. Yeah. To the now, head. Most, most of them sound lethal. He becomes a skeleton. Marv becomes oh, yeah, a skeleton. Yeah. 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 The second uh, one. yeah. That it, man the, is a corpse. He just straight like, the, takes like 50,000 volts. The big uh, one is the paint can swinging from the second yes. floor, hitting him in the head, and then him flying down another story and landing yes. flat on his back. He should be dead. <laughs> like and, and not well, just not just at the bottom of the stairs, like through the hole in the floor to the basement. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is Angron we're talking about, but still. Yeah. yeah also, also a brick from like an eight story. Uh, oh, the head. Yes. It doesn't just so leave a mark. It literally like, caved in his skull. Like let's. It was an insta kill. The yeah. 90s were the 90s were a different time. It was, it was, it was. funny. We, we called it humor back then. <laughs> it was a comedy. <laughs> Somebody got their hair burned <laughs> off and everybody laughed. It was funny back then. <laughs> right. it, it's funny how like the lens has changed, but um, like something like Warhammer, for example, is just evergreen because it's just right out the gate, <laughs> grim dark. That's it. Like, listen, you, you're going to tell you some stuff. People are going to get cut in half, chewed up, spit out bombed on just deal with it well i think also the difference is that 40k is generally um on a large scale effect so it's easier to look at it it's not as individual you don't see as much individual suffering it's large groups so it's not as much of a uh that's true like right like battlefield wide uh, yeah. company wide even when they're talking yeah. about like, the hive city's gone mad but really like the individual mm-hmm. breakdown we're not we're not like zooming in on this one in. habitat. There's a word for that, like psychological thing, but I can't remember the name of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very fascinating. Like the the stuff that happens specifically to Eisenhorn, like even though it's happening to one man, do feel way more personal. And um, well, the reason why they feel more per- personal is apparently this one fucking subsector. Every other day, the world is going to end in terror because of the subsector. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. It's in peril. Yes. Oh, oh, look! Another demon host is being summoned. That's going to destroy Terra. It is the third this week. It's just like, hey, this is uh, it's Monday, right? Like that's what we're doing today. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the uh, the superhero, the superhero t- design. T- right? Tomorrow's the Inquisition potluck. Is that what we're doing? Cool. All right. First, <laughs> let's uh, let's take care of this chaos incursion. Last Inquisition potluck ended up destroying ninety percent of the Inquisition. <laughs> Who do you have for your secret Santa? I don't know. Let's talk about it after I burn this heretic. The last parade I was at, my apprentice was smeared by a thunder. <laughs> I don't do oh, parades. Yes. I don't do parades anymore. <laughs> They wanted to throw a parade in my honor. It turned out it was the last parade I ever went to. Rip, rip uh, Ravenor. Oh, poor Ravenor. Losing like privileges. Yeah. He, he, you know, technically he became better for it, but... He, he, he did. did. Well, when you guys aren't playing Legions, what is it that you're up to? Um, yeah, mostly just streaming Hearthstone. Like I said earlier, I'm I'm basically a, a full-time streamer, although I have no, um, streamed no. Chorus Heresy <laughs> Legions a few times, mostly event runs, but like the Titan Death uh, expansion was kind of a big turn off from event runs. Yeah, I didn't like the Titan event events, but I like our Titan Death events. But Titan Death did add uh, cards that have now made Orphan of the War my favorite faction, so I'm really pushing them right now. Things of War, that's my favorite yeah. as well. Yeah, I was about to say Cthulhu uh, started off by saying Orphans is their main. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been I've been playing the hell out of them simply due to the new uh, mission. That mission, the new mission. helped Branson out. I don't, I really like it. I like Nerek Kieran. Uh, but I like the mission because it's, it's, you don't, it's like a puzzle. Like every time I have to like think, do I want to keep it in my opening hand? It's not like a, oh, I play it, brain dead, uh, slam cards, I mean, to get it. I, I kind of disagree on that regard because I'm currently in high terror with it and it's play it every single turn. And it cool. just works because it doesn't, there's no downside to not getting it because your deck's not built around it. There's no, there's no loss in just here, turn one, mission. Let's do okay. it. Okay. You make a compelling argument. I'm not in high terror. 
So, <laughs> hey, maybe that was just a bit of insight for you. It, yeah, it's no, one that's... of those cards where it's not broken, which is why I'm completely fine with it. But it is, yeah. Like, I can afford to play it on my turn one. I'm going to play it on my turn one. Would you All say right. that uh, Orphans of War is one of those factions that is very card reliant and not good for new yes. players? Yes. Nowadays, especially. Yeah, I would agree. Because. It's you're, not... you're, you're gonna want Ash and Claw. Boom. That's an epic. You're gonna want their new flanking bikes, which isn't even in the initial pack. Which I didn't mention yeah. that earlier, but I wanted to rant about that. Gif and Titan Death are great with an asterisk. Because they introduced the very, very annoying mechanic of, oh, you want this card? Sorry. Uh, it's in a different pack. For this yeah. Card. Yeah. Oh. Blood Angels got that four mana three, three, four mana, four energy three, three that like rallies, does damage, then also gains flank. Mm -hmm. Such a huge swing. And if they're not in the Blood Angels pack, you got it. <laughs> they're not as rarity locked as like custodies. But yeah, they, I definitely consider them not. A good beginning one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's interesting because they do like kind of hint at the mechanic of copying enemy cards. That's my favorite part. I mean, well, yeah, oh, so. it helps. Kareen is void, definitely for sure. Good. Yeah. I mean, he helps, he helps fill his own void, but he, there are those, just those key cards. With, uh, I would say the epics are nice, but it is one of those factions where really it's about the pieces you've got. Like, you can't just throw in. Some comments and res with them and go like there's you have to decide what are your two drops going to yeah. be what's your strategy what's your end game because they don't really have one they don't have a closer so <laughs> how are you going to come to that close are you going to outlive outlast are you doing some weird sentence thing are you going to do overdraw are you going to rely on stealing your opponent's crap or, or crucial choice or copying something like is that your strategy yeah. Like you are you can, stealing your yeah. opponent's ender? Yeah, you've really got to figure it out. You can't just throw a pile of cards with them. Unless, and, and no, I, I shouldn't say unless. Uh, Injured Har is another example. Like That is a specific design of a deck that you've got to build to, to get to a, an end result. So, yeah, I feel like you have to put a lot of thought into what you've got with them, and that makes it where they're not a faction that you can just be like, hey, cool, I've got some Orphans of Words cards. Let's try things out. Yeah. Do you think Horus Heresy Legions will ever introduce the idea of Highlander decks? Where you have to have thirty unique cards yeah. in your deck. Uh, I would love no, to see it. I, I don't. Yeah, I had somebody ask this question for the Q and A, and I'm bringing up like they mentioned uh, Commander Two as another option, which I don't think this game can do Commander. I would love for a hundred card deck. Don't get me wrong, oh. but let's face it: the factions themselves don't have a hundred cards. There's like fifty cards in a faction, yeah, including yeah, the Warlords. Um, so that's just uh, not. But also. The Warlords kind of take the place of a commander, because for me, what yeah, is important yeah. about commander is having this one card that you can build a deck on and be guaranteed it every time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in or seriously, you got your Warlord already. Yeah, it's yeah. your boy already. Yeah. Um, yeah. I only ask about the Highlander thing is because a lot of digital card games have begun embracing the idea. Like Hearthstone, for example, has a lot of Highlander cards nowadays. They actually even have cards where it's like, uh, if your whole deck is only even-costed cards. I would love something to happens. see stuff like that. Honestly, that would be cool. I would love to see... I feel like more cards like uh when i and when i say like rom i don't mean like his ability like his concept of you get, yeah you deck get, building yes exactly yeah, the restrictions, of it. Yes. Deck building yeah. restrictions. You, you build yeah, like, with this with this in mind therefore you get the benefit of this warlord or you know start with plus five health if you have these cards in your deck or your all deck all yeah. cards in your deck are below energy cost whatever or whatever the case like is a, i like that idea the um the neutral card the neutral warlords are almost there because like inherently the neutral factions are a bit weaker mm -hmm. than the chapters so they're pound for pound their abilities are generally a little bit more than like a regular commanders but it's just not quite there right mm -hmm. like it's <laughs> They're not quite given enough of a benefit for them to be like, yes, this is what I get for sacrificing all of the faction cards in exchange only using one thing. You know, one thing that we didn't talk about, and kind of to go into your your carry on the the, the Highlander idea, uh, tournaments. You want you want to earn gold for for new cards, tournaments and contests, promo codes with content creators. Like that's the easiest way. It all you have to do is play. It, play in a tournament. Play play in the subreddit tournament, which is for new players. Uh, typically, mm -hmm. you know, high, low rarity, or there's penalties for newer for older players who've got to like build with le with much more uh, deck restrictions. 
Like you win, you get 3,000 gold and a legendary. And that 3,000 gold, that's 30 crates. So put the math together, that's actually two legendaries. One of those is your choice. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that either. Now you yeah. see, now you guys know. Then they have, yeah. we have weekly tournaments during the weekday, and then we have tournaments every weekend. Not to mention we have major tournament series like the World Cup, Lodge Wars. I do the, the Barnet Legions. That's just more like fun for fun and uh, stuff. But we've had a couple prizes lately for some, some, uh, some peoples. We might like to do that a little bit more often, but promo codes are something that your content creators do occasionally when they're doing streams or they're, uh, they've are they got contests, such as the one I'm doing with the Place Your Bets on the World Cup, uh, which we announced this episode that aired today. Not this mm-hmm. episode, but the episode that aired this Thursday. That's a good way for players to win 1,000 gold, and that's 10 crates right there. So I totally spaced it. I had that on my list to talk about, and I, I, you just reminded me when you talked about Highlander because that is one aspect where you're playing the game and you get the resources that can allow you to build, you buy more cards, and if you win, you get a legendary of your choice, which is even better. Yeah, and that's really valuable experience. And as a um, moderator, I guess I got to shout out these. We also have something called Crucibles, which are challenge warlords that are very difficult. But if you're able to beat us, you get a legendary of your choice. If you're the first one to do so, of course. There's wow. ways to make cards. There's a way to get cards you need. Tur- for tournaments, I couldn't draw Sanguinius to save my life, so I won him in a tournament. They had, then added him in the shop a week later with his alt art, but, you know, that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> All planned. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There's many ways to do it. So there you go. Well, Alex, what are I you doing when you're uh, when you're not doing agents? Uh, you know, I I had that campaign I've been running recently. Though I've had to put it on hold due to players having real life problems get rapidly in the way of it. So I'm going to have to see if I can't make a new campaign for my uh, players who remain because they've agreed to just keep it on hold till the other guy comes back. Let me see how that goes. I'm gonna have to do a lot of winging it. Luckily, if you do any DMing for any uh, extended period of time, you realize quickly that 90% of what you do is winging it. DMing is improv. Yeah. It's not even improv in the sake, I mean like complete just, oh fuck, oh shit, um, boom, here's the encounter, I guess, because you guys did blank. I've actually been uh, running the same campaign for a little over two years now. The party goes nice. from level 1 to level 16 now, and um, uh, I've, I've done a lot of winging it, yes. Yeah. 100%, yeah. a lot of winging all it. Mine, all mine are set in the same world. So I like to have like each campaign has to affects the world and like the next campaign will be affected by the actions of the players. But yeah, it requires okay. so much. Oh, how how would the, them doing this affect literally everything else? Yeah, and that continuity is amazing. That's aces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I had this world going for I think it's a year and nine months now. So having to pause it for a bit is going to be annoying. But I can yeah. play a new world. It should only take me uh, a short period of time. There's nothing worse than having to like pause something big like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well, it happens. Real life gets in the way. That's just the nature of things. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been doing. Well, does anybody have anything they'd like to plug? Uh, well, I'm gonna. Get, I'll do my usual. I'm gonna plug my boy uh, Doran. That's Drew Lee Clark on Instagram. He does commissions. He he's done my profile picture, the beautiful crab and the pirate hat and the wood burr one I have. Hey, great artist buddy, and he's a good buddy of mine. And uh, shout out to him because he did listen to uh, this. Today's episode, and like I said, if you want to go through apotheosis to become a Canadian citizen, you have to send me a video of you grabbing a goose by the throat. Uh, <laughs> that is all in reference to last episode, so if you didn't listen to it today, you'll have no idea the fuck I'm talking about. But trust me, it makes sense. <laughs> um, well, I guess I would uh, plug myself, twitch.tv slash uh, it's John. I'm a professional card game player. I love all card games, and I'll definitely stream Horse Heresy Legions in the future. Uh, probably when the new event run starts, so there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm Alex. I, uh, I'm just some random guy. Um, I don't really <laughs> have anything to plug, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll plug you guys then, I guess. Listen to them. Yeah, hey, check out John the podcast. On Twitch.tv, Warp Chatter Podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll take it. We, we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah we've, we've any any plugs out there, you know, that we always try to get whoever's out, whether you're you've got something to plug or not. Just kind of an opportunity to do so, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to plug deck slots as I as I am want to do, as things are needed. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week's episode. We're going to be doing the Every Guild Q and A, the uh, the deadline for yeah. getting your questions in. By the time you hear this episode, 
that deadline's over, so you're going to have to wait to uh, see what questions were asked by multiple players and some individual, like basically, like we've done in the past. I mean, the, the, the most asked questions we'll get to first, and then we'll get to all the questions that we possibly can and hopefully pick their brain a little bit, ask for some deck slots, ask for what's going on in the game. Like, there's a lot of people who've got a lot of similar questions, not just aimed at, uh, you know, Titan hate or. You know, I it. need to ask them about Dizare's plasma gun. Uh, you, we that is, the, I gotta ask. Even if it's off the record, I need to ask Mister Everguild what the fuck happened with it. Because that <laughs> weapon was that weapon was visually changed. The gauntlets the are back. still not red for Sevatar, so I mean, maybe the gauntlets are still not red on Sevatar. There is a magazine for a mega bolter still attached to the plasma cannon. Yeah, somebody's having fun with Photoshop. <laughs> maybe they're just doing it just to see if people notice. It's entirely so, possible. Yeah, yeah, I know why the like Sevatar a, lashed the red gauntlet, so. It's a giant uh, Easter egg hunt, right? Yeah. You know, find find, oh. find the flaws. There's just, there's there's the ones out there, like you can tell. Yeah, some are easier to tell than others. Once you see I, them, you can't unsee them. I really like how some of the card art is just like uh, one particular zoomed in part of a, another piece of larger art. Like yes. the Skatari Protector is just like, That's you like, know. I would say that's like 90% of the art in the game, and the rest of them are just like collected visions or a book cover. Yeah, the, the Skatari Protector is great, because it's like, you know, independently a strong Mechanicum infantry card, like a 4-5 um, front line. And then when you pull up the picture, he's like totally getting killed by, um, uh, what's his face, Corvus? Corex? Mm -hmm. Getting smashed yeah, up on top, it's, it's, it's so oh, funny. No. It's like, what, what is it? There's a troop, it's a 2-3 with backlash draw card. It's like, that guy's and, not surviving. He's... <laughs> and then there's a 3-5 with an active ability. And they look almost identical because their art is a two guys side by side holding rocket launchers. And they just cut out each of them and make each a card. <laughs> yeah, you zoom back in a little bit. It's like, you guys are part of the same squad. You guys are actually brothers. Yeah, it's bad. It's the big brother and little brother. But, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of warhammer 30k art to pull from so i am really grateful that they do stretch what they can where they can yeah and and, and for yeah. the most part their house art is pretty pretty banging you know i mean they they have those ferris manises and perturabos but then for the, they've got Oof. some other really good stuff out there that works very well yeah yeah all right well um, also i will mention here again at uh, towards the end of it the uh as i said earlier the place your bets contest for the world cup that's the contest that's going to be getting in you've got until august 31st to get your submissions in for that and what you do if you listened to last week's episode uh great you should know but i'll repeat it again here you basically take a look at the world cup entrance and then pm me your list of first through eighth who you think is going to finish first through eighth and then at the end of the whole World Cup series, I'm going to take a look at those entries. I'm going to rank out the points and see who has got the highest score. Whoever wins the top three is going to get a promo code worth 1,000 gold. I've already gotten five submissions today, and the episode just dropped today. So it's fantastic. People are listening. People are looking at the World Cup bracket to see what teams are playing, who they consist of, uh, and making their predictions. And, and none of them are all the same, which is great. It's great to see a good variety so far. I'm looking forward to collecting those over the next month and seeing what everybody's predictions are. But also just kind of, even if you didn't get a play in the World Cup, it gives you a way to kind of get engaged with it. And I'm excited to bring that to everybody. So I'm going to plug that as well. Yeah, it's fantastic news. Appreciate the information. Yes. Uh, thanks for having me. I would love to be a guest again whenever you guys roll around to having uh, repeat guests. It's a fantastic experience, and thanks again. All right. Excellent. Well, yeah, I will get you on the schedule for sure because we've got we, – we try to keep uh, keep it going, and sometimes we, we get those moments where we don't have too many guests, and we've got World Cup coming up, and we've got probably some time down the road, so it will be good to, to touch base again. Great. Yeah. yeah. I'll be in touch. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for joining us, and uh, appreciate no your problem. time. And Likewise. All right. Bye. Oh, come on. Have a good Bye, day, everybody. Swan. See you. Bye. The sunlight dims. This has been another episode of the Warp Chatter Podcast. Thank you for listening. Eternal loyalty. Burn it. Burn it all. Well executed.